Hello and welcome. Today I'm joined by Paul Kelly. So Paul is the head of academy physiotherapy at Liverpool Football Club. He's currently isolating with COVID, so he's uh, he's probably got longer than he previously would have for this interview. But how are you doing, Paul? Yeah, I'm good, thanks, Andy. Thank you. Yeah. No, how are you feeling? I'm okay. Yeah, it's um, yeah, just just uh, thankfully the symptoms are, are relatively mild. So I've just had a cold and, and a bit of a sore throat, like like a lot of people seem to be getting at the moment. Um, but um, I, I keep testing positive on the lateral flow, so obviously I can't go back into work. But uh, yeah, that's uh, hopefully in the next day or two that that'll, that'll sort itself out and I can I can get back in. So um, mm. yeah, the, the lads at the academy are looking after things there for me, so that's good. Very good. So in terms of like the, the, the COVID then now, because I think that for, for general people, is it from next month that you don't need to isolate? Is Do you know what's happening with in sport? Um, we have our own policies. Obviously, the, 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 the first team set, Jim Moxon sets our sort of club policy. So, um, yeah, we, we just work off the back of that, really. Obviously, Jim's aware of, of, of the, the legislation and, and everything, but we we can't afford to have any sort of outbreak, certainly at this type of time of year, you know, with, with, uh, with every, you know, the games that are coming thick and fast. And obviously, um, it wouldn't be great to have four or five players having to isolate. So, yeah, we have to, we're, we're guided by Jim a little bit. Uh, and like I say, at, at the moment, we're, we isolate for five days and then we need, we need two lateral flows, negative lateral flows. But, but that seems to be a problem. Um, at the moment, because a lot of people are continuing to test positive for a number of days after the, the initial isolation. So, um, yeah, that seems to be an issue moving forward. Mm, yeah, well, hopefully you get a negative one soon. You can yeah. get back to work and get getting amongst it again. <laughs> um, so, again, you're someone well, I've, I've known you for absolutely years and never really chatted properly about your career. So I know that you played previously, but where are you from originally? Yeah, born in Manchester. Yeah, um, grew up around the the Ermston area, uh, if you like. So um, started playing as as most kids do um, for for a, a local uh, Flixton football club, um, and then from there progressed on into into City City's academy, if you like. But this was sort of um, early eighties, sort to mid eighties type thing. So, and then I managed to. Um, um, I, I went in as a as a YTS at, at City at 16 years of age. I left I left a, um, a school in Wally Range, St Bede's, to go to to City. Um, at, at, after my uh, we we were the last year to do the old O levels. People won't remember the old uh, the O levels, but um, it moved on to GCSEs then. But yeah, I left after that and then went and did a two year YTS at, at City, and um, did did okay for a while. You know, sub for the first team and in and around the first team and, and what have you. And then and then I. I I, uh, I twisted my left knee and like a lot of physios in football, ended up with a significant injury. I, I, I ruptured my ACL and um, didn't get the best of surgery at the time um, in hindsight. And instead of being out probably nine, ten months now as an average, I, I didn't play. Um, I didn't play football for 23 months. So, you know, that cost me a lot, a, a big period of time in, in the part of my career where I was still developing and uh, and to be honest, my, my knee never really recovered. If you like, there was always a, there was always a bit of laxity in the knee, and I, and I couldn't I couldn't sort of go 100% because I thought my knee was going to maybe give way a little bit. So on the back of that, I'd ha I had quite a bit of physio along the way through that 23 months, and and um, I kept I kept on as a, like a, as a professional for another two or three years, and then I got to a point where where one I was struggling to earn a living out of the game because people were offering me sort of month to month contracts and this type of stuff. Um, and I'd sort of fell out of love with it a little bit as well. So I, I needed something else to do. And um, I, I wanted obviously to stay in, in, in football because that, that was a big uh, a big love of mine. And um, I thought, well, I'll go, I'll go and be a physio, try and be a physio and hopefully um, stay stay in sport, if you like. So, yeah, that's that's how I got started with it. But um, the, the 23 months I was out and didn't I didn't play play sort of competitive football for I had three three big knee operations it was a it was a you know a difficult time but but it was during that time that uh that sort of you know you had to start thinking about other other avenues and and maybe earning a living um and then that's where I, I, I sort of thought about the physio so. so what was it like then so for that 23 month period then so what do you actually yeah. do well I mean that I can remember it was at the old main road stadium so um 
I um, there, there was an old um, gymnasium that was under the North Stand. You know, people will remember the the, the the old North Stand at City, and um, and basically there was a there was a rickety old multi gym underneath in a room at the back of the stadium there. It was shocking, really. So it was, all, it was you couldn't even call it a spit and sawdust gym. It was um, it was just really really basic. So when you were at the club. You know, it was all. It was you would be working in there. You would be lifting a few weights. Um, but what what the club did do at the time was well, there was a rehab centre in in Lillishall in Shropshire. So over that twenty three months, I um, I did over thirty weeks at, at this rehab centre in, um, in in Shropshire. So um, and had physio there again. So that that all the while that I'm trying to to get back, I'm, I'm watching these physios work and thinking, well. You know, I, you know, if things don't go well, then that that could be an option for me. So yeah, uh, it's I split the time between Main Road and Platt Lane, where the training ground was, and um, and Lillishall in Shropshire. The national, right. I think it's, it used to be the National Sports Centre. So yeah. yeah, that's what it was about. But um, long days and, and not very nothing like the players. You know, most players have today. Certainly, at the clubs like Liverpool. Um, the, the facilities are, are, you know, so much better, and the medical care is so much better as well. So, um, mm. was um, so was that the Lilith Shaw? Was Graham Smith doing that then? Was that his centre? Graham had just left. Yeah. So um, there's a fellow called Phil Newton there, um, who who ran the centre, and um, yeah, he 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 was very good. And you, you, a lot of the clubs at the time used it. So I was a 17 year old sort of young kid. Um, in the treatment room, but the the people that I met there at the time, sort of, you know, Liverpool used to send their players there, so so I, I got to meet Alan Hansen, got to meet Kevin McDonald, John Barnes was there. Um, there was another player there at, at that used to go. I used to go to Lillishaw with from City called Paul Lake, who's a good friend of mine. Who uh, who you know he had another sort of significant knee injury and 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 struggled to recover from that. So. Um, yeah, we used to travel down and backwards and forwards to Lily Shawl and um, try and keep each other going a little bit along the way. So, so yeah, it's but a lot of the clubs then the facilities obviously in the, in the late eighties at most clubs weren't very good. Uh, the medical sort of side of things wasn't particularly good. So, all the big clubs would send their players to Lily Shawl um, mm. and and do a few weeks there and and then bring them back to the club and and just work the injuries like that. So. Yeah, and then so Paul Lakes, are he really famous and famous for his injury as well. I seem to have a massive future ahead of him. Um, I've read his book actually, which is amazing, isn't yeah. it? As well. Yeah. So, so what was that like with being with him then? Because again, he was so high profile, and again, it's still still yeah. referred to about that. Yeah, no, no, Paul Lake. Um, I grew I grew up playing, so he's he's a couple of years older than me. Um, but we we grew up playing in the junior teams together at City and and in the in the youth cup and and that type of stuff. So I, I got to know Lakey really well and um, and his brothers. And um, no, Paul Lake w- was was a top top class player. I mean he he um, you know it's, it's a bit of a throwaway comment, but he would have captained England in my opinion. He was that good, um, a top top line player. I mean I might I. Potentially, may have should have earned a living at the game somewhere in one of the leagues, maybe. But he was he was he was a top line player. So it was a, it was a like it is for all young players who get significant injuries. You set your heart on becoming a professional footballer, and then all of a sudden it's taken away from you. It, it's a difficult time, and obviously um, Paul's had his 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 issues and and bits and you know mental health issues away from football. Um, but um, you know it's it's just one of those things that you unfortunately it's quite common that. That players will get injured as they're, as they're progressing through their careers at a young age, and you know some people struggle with it. Some and um, and it does it, it can hold people young players back. Um, mm. So then you've gone to do your degree at Salford. Then so what was that experience like? I didn't do that. Actually, I uh, the, the Salford the PFA course was actually full at the time. So I um, wanted to I needed to get qualified um, as quick as possible. So I'd managed um, to, do, to do A levels and um, at night school. Um, all the while, I was trying to sort of resurrect my career, and um, so I, I went and applied through UCAS to go to uh, Liverpool University. So I actually trained over in Liverpool. All right. Um, and rather than it being a, a four-year sort of part-time course with the PFA, 
it was three years full time. So, um, so I got qualified a year a year sooner, if you like. So, um, which which I needed to do. So that was that's how it worked out. Yeah, and what was the setup like over there then? Did you did you sort of feel like you we ever sort of did you ever uh, like frustration in terms of you just had a your football career kind of stopped? Like, what were you feeling like psychologically yourself then? Yeah, it was difficult. I mean, I um, but I'd probably got to a point where um, you know, I, I like I say, I'd fell out of love with football a little bit. Um, and by by going and doing the studying, I, I took back control. I wasn't relying on whether someone, you know, whether a coach thought I was a decent player to give me a contract. I mean, I, I knew I was struggling. I, I couldn't, I wasn't the same player that I was before I got injured. So, um, yeah, it was sort of taking back control a little bit. It's one of those things, if, if with any sort of education, if it's how much you want it. And if you want to go and study, you can do. If you don't, you don't. So I, I sort of took back control a little bit, whereas the, my career at the time was, um, I remember speaking to... Um, to Halifax Town when they were they were I think in the in the bottom division at the time, uh, and a friend of mine, Osher Williams, rang me uh, and he and he started talking about a month to month contract, and I got to a point where because because basically because I'd done okay at City at the beginning, everyone knew about my, the state of my knee, everyone knew I'd missed 23 months, everyone knew I'd had three or four operations, so it was I, I wasn't in a strong sort of bargaining position, so um, so yeah by by coming out and um, doing the, the university course, I could still play semi-professionally and to try and earn a little bit of money, which obviously was, was important. Um, but I, I could study and, and, and get qualified as quick as possible. And so I did the Liverpool course. Right. And did you live over there or did you commute no, over? No, commuted because at the time I, I, I had a house and, um, you know, I had a mortgage to pay and this type of stuff. And, and, and actually I, I, had a, I had a son. My son, Sam, was, was born. So it was... Uh, um, yeah, it was a difficult time, but but you know, like I say to to the young players now at Liverpool, you know they all say, you know, or a lot of them say, you know, I can't, I couldn't study or I couldn't do this or I couldn't do that. It's how much you want it? I, I firmly believe every, everyone can learn, everyone has that ability. It's just how much you you want it. And and I was in a situation where you know I, I needed I needed to get another another sort of uh, profession. So um, it wasn't easy, but you know we got through. So when you say how much you want it, do you mean from an academic standpoint of getting your head yeah. around things? Yeah, because you know if it's you know that you could you, you could study if you want to if you, you to get these qualifications, it's obviously it's hard work, it's tough going at times. But um, you know, you, you, if you, if you really want it enough, then you'll study hard enough to get the to get the qualifications. That's, I'm a firm believer. Everyone can learn, and um, yeah, that's how I looked on it. So it was. I, I took back control of my of my career, if you like, and and basically and and tried to study and do the best I could from from a physio perspective to pass the to get the qualifications. So. Mm. And then, what was it like then? So, when you were coming out of it, when you were doing your placements, did you have an idea of where you wanted to go? Did you have any aspirations? Um, obviously, that the 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 goal at the end was to um, to try and get back into football. That that was the plan. Um, in in how it eventually happened was a bit quicker than I thought it would happen. But no, I, I got qualified in 1996 and I, uh, I applied for the, for the NHS. So I did um, some rotational placements. So it's, it was the old Salford Royal at the time. Um, so yeah, and, and thoroughly enjoyed it. So I, I was 25 when I qualified and, um, and yeah, I, I did 18 months at, at Salford Royal. Which which I, I, I really enjoyed, you know, uh, working in the in the department there it was a big department. Physios work on in every ward on, in the, in hospitals. So I did a surgical rotation, in, on the intensive care that type of stuff. We were on call for for when people would get becoming unwell during the during the night. You would go in and you would try and help these people. Um, so yeah, I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I didn't spend a long time in the NHS, but it, it's uh, yeah, I, I did enjoy it. Definitely. Um, and then once I'd come through, I'd, I'd, while I was working in the NHS, I was working um, part time at City covering games on a weekend. So most clubs now have rotational staff to cover um, academy games and, and, you know, at the weekends or training sessions of an evening. So I was doing that as well. 
Did you have did, did you have still have connections at City then? How did you manage to sort that out? Yeah, yeah. No, I mean uh, the the person who sort of um, sorted that out for me w- w- was Franny Lee, who um, who you know he was the chairman at the time, and um, he basically I, I mean I, I I didn't know him, and I, I wrote into him and obviously made me aware of my situation, and, and he basically said yeah fine. So we uh, I had the qualifications and and that. So yeah, I started working for their covering some of their junior games at the weekend. Mm. That's how that's just, I, I remember just going back on this, and this would have been probably mid nineties. I went went over on a family trip, and we went to a, to a tour round. I think my brother was at university. Went to Old Trafford. Okay. The stadium was, you know, rammed. There was tours going all the time. Then yeah. we drove over to Main Road just because we thought we would do. Yeah. And literally, no one was there. We like knocked on the door. Two blokes in there just kind of showed us i think they showed us that jimmy you mentioned earlier on yeah you could not get two different setups of united and city at that point yeah. Yeah. but like it was brilliant like going into city they showed us uve rosler's boots it was like a completely different setup and yeah, yeah that was at the old main road but yeah like to see what was it like at city then but we, we know what they've gone on to do now which is one of the best infrastructures in world sports but what was city set up like um yeah um, well, basically, as you can imagine, it, it's, it was probably the words I'll say it was never a dull moment because they, they were up and down the leagues. Um, there wasn't a lot of money there. There was um, there was talks of takeovers. Peter Swells was the chairman at one point. Then Franny Lee took it over. Then then he he got he had he left, and you know it was it was just constant change as a club. Um, and you know the club was going up and down the leagues. When I eventually did get into football um, as, a, as a physio, was at, my first club was, was Blackpool, and obviously I remember we, we played. Um, City ended up in League One at one point, so the third tier, and they came over to play Blackpool at Bloomfield Road. But they would bring, they would bring fifteen twenty thousand. It's always been that that big club, if you like. Um, but it, it was it was up and down the league because it was financially it was probably a bit up and down and chaotic and different owners and different people coming in and yeah but but the fan the core fans were were brilliant brilliant always mm. happen so and then so what was it like going into blackpool and how did that come about was that directly a full-time position yeah i mean it was um i covered a game at bloom at um squires gate um and um while i was there for city while i was there um uh, a lad that I knew called Mark Taylor. I don't know if you've come across Mark. Mark um, was a player at Blackpool, and he's, I think he's a Hartlepool lad, um, where, where he sort of comes from. But he played. He was a player at Blackpool, and um, he was Blackpool's first team physio at the time. And when I was at Lillishall three or four years earlier, or six or seven years earlier, I'd met Mark, and um, I was covering the game at, at Squires Gate, and he came over, and, and we had a chat. And um, and then he basically, uh, I didn't know at the time, but he'd just agreed to start uh, to go to um, Bolton Wanderers with Sam Allardyce. Sam had left being manager at Blackpool and he'd gone, to, gone in at Bolton. So anyway, I covered the game on the Saturday and Mark saying, do you want to get into football, this, that and the other? And I've gone, well, yeah, eventually, but I'm happy. I'm happy. And I just, I'm not long qualified. I'm at Salford Royal and, and I'm covering bits of games. So I said, I'm happy. And then I came into work on the Monday morning into Salford Royal and 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 uh, the receptionist shouted me over and went, oh, um, Mark, you've had a phone call and I went, who off? And he went, oh, Mark Taylor from, uh, he's, he's wants to speak to you. So um, anyway, the bottom line, he basically said, you know, you 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 do you want to be considered for the role? Come over and have an interview and this type of stuff. So that's how it sort of um, it panned out, if you like. So. Yeah. Why do you reckon he asked you then? What what was it about you, bearing in mind he'd not shown that much interest? Yeah, I mean, he, he made a fair point actually because um, he basically said um, the, there was another cohort. I mean, I, I, there was obviously an interview process and, and there was there was six or seven people put in for the job. But um, um, at the time, the, the PFA course was just about to finish. So his, the way he sold it to me was basically, look, if you want to get into football, this would be a good chance for you. Um, there's another, there's another 12 or 15 PFA physios coming out, you know, qualifying this summer. 
So all of a sudden, there's going to be a lot more competition for these jobs. So if you want to have a go for it, go for it. And um, and the more I thought about it, I thought, well, yeah, okay, I've got nothing to lose. And um, yeah, I went over and had a had an interview. So uh, and it and it went from there. So um, I, I then subsequently found out. I mean, Mark was set the interviews up and everything, and um, Mark was going straight was leaving. So it was in it, it was in it, his interest to get to get a new physio in. So right, okay, so, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but no, I mean Blackpool was was a was a great move for me. Uh, it was probably a bit too soon. I I felt because I was happy and wanted to do my rotations. But um, but yeah, soon as soon as I went through into Blackpool there and got offered that job, um, you know, all of a sudden I was the youngest lead physio in the league. So in all in all four leagues. So okay, it's, it's a Blackpool football club, but I got a, a lot of decent press off that. And. Um, you know, even on the back of that, I got I was getting offered jobs along the way, and um, but uh, but Blackpool was a, was a, a good club, interesting, um, and so if I was there, I was 26 years of age, and half the squad were it was a senior senior squad, so pretty much half of them, three quarters of them were older than me, and you know hundreds of league games under their belts, so it was a real quick learning um, learning curve, because they all knew the the tricks of the trade and what have you, so it was. Uh, it, it was a brilliant time, but you had to learn quickly, and um, yeah, it was a it was it was a good move in the end. Um, going in there, and to Blackpool, they've got notorious like the ownership that like the Oysters and so on. They're always really high profile. How did yeah. you find working in that environment? Yeah, well, I never met Owen because Owen was obviously um, um, in prison. So, um, but Carl Oyston, I mean the the. Um, I still have a lot of time for Blackpool and the Blackpool fans obviously turned against him and the family. But my dealings with Carl Oyston were always very fair. And um, yeah, I found him um, because when I first went there, his um, Owen Oyston's wife, um, Vicky Oyston, was the chair chairperson. And um, so um, she sort of ran the club a little bit, but you could tell she wasn't that interested in it. And then Carl took over from there. And Carl was always very fair with me, you know. He, he, he's um, so I, I have no, uh, I have no sort of axe to grind with the Oyston family at all. That you know, it was, it was a good move for me. Um, and it was the old adage that if, if you could work at sort of that level, everything else is, you know, it's it's easy. It's not easy, but you know, when you've got no resources, and you 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 know, you've got the, the facilities weren't great. I think. They've only just recently started changing Squires Gate. It was, you know, I left in around 2000 and it, it's been the same sort of facilities for, for 20 years. It, it, it didn't change or alter or didn't have any investment for that for 20 odd years. So um, if you can work as a young physio at that level and, you know, it, it, it does stand you in good stead, definitely. So. I, I would always, my, one of my first things, we, we take some students at Liverpool and my first thing is once you get qualified or even when, you, you know, if you can get into helping out at a club, just just patient mileage is everything. The more you see, the better you get. So, um, yeah, just get, just get going. And, uh, and Blackpool was a, was, a, was a good move for me, definitely. Mm. Yeah. And then how did you come to move on from there? Um, uh, again, Mark. Taylor was leaving Black uh, Blackburn to go to um, Bolton, um, and um, he um, he basically so that, that there was a first team role come up at, at Blackburn Rovers, and um, so I uh, I basically heard about the job and sent a CV over, and um, I got a phone call off off uh, Dave Fever to come over for an interview. And that went from there, basically. So, um, yeah, it was uh, it was uh, another good move. I, I went there, and we Blackburn were in the championship at the time. Um, Graham Souness was the manager, and I went there in the November, and the team got promoted to the Premier League in the the May of that year. And then um, we basically stayed in the Premier League up until well, I left in two thousand and eleven. So it was a Again, it was a good 10, 11 years of, of comfortably staying in the Premier League, real good facilities, um, working with, with, with really good people. 
Um, you know, so yeah, Blackburn was a, was another real good move for me. Mm, I've had uh, quite a few of the medical team from that point. So John Hartley recently, Dave, yeah. uh, Dave Fever. So were you familiar with say Dave before you went in there? Then it's, it's funny because he, he um, what the the day I was leaving, or the, within the couple of days of me leaving Hope Hospital. Salford Royal to go to Blackpool. Dave came in to do an in-service training at Salford Royal, and I'd bumped into him and I was having a chat with him. And I basically said, "Look, I'm, um, you know, uh, I'm I'm leaving and I'm going to go and do do Blackpool Football Club." And and he was what he's basically said. Well, you know, there'll be pluses and negatives. He 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 thought I should probably stay at Salford Royal and get another couple of years of experience. Um. But but basically, I, I I'd already agreed to leave, and I, you know it was what I wanted to do. So, but it, yeah, I remember him saying, well, you know maybe you should do your rotations or do some more couple of years of in the NHS. So I said, well, I've agreed now, and and then yeah, well, I, I constantly remind him about that when we uh, whenever we catch up because his initial thing was staying the host, staying in the NHS, but um, that's the only time I'd met him before before I actually went for my interview. But he obviously remembered the conversation and. And like I say, the Blackpool job, I was getting some um, some some good press, and and you know I had a, a, some good references as well. So one of one of them was an ex Blackburn uh, physio called Alan Smith. So Alan's son, Alan Smith, um, was a physio at Sheffield Wednesday for a number of years, and he was the he was famously the England physio for probably 10, 15 years as well. And his son Paul Smith is. is um, used to be at Sheffield Wednesday as well as a, as a physio, so he was one of my references, and um, so I think David spoken to him as well. So yeah, that's that's how it sort of opened up for me there. And what was the difference like going into Blackburn? That did have a great training ground, established team, and so on. Yeah, just just facilities. I mean, Blackburn at the time was the the first. Jack Walker made it the first. They, they were the first sort of club to sort of in effect buy the Premier League. Um, the training ground was, you know, unbelievable. Um, Jack Walker spent absolute millions on on the training ground, and um, so that you know that makes the job a little bit easier. Um, and it was just a really, but but they kept the it was family friendly. Um, like I say, I was working with 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 Dave and 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 Phil Batty, and um, you know we, they weren't just work colleagues. We became friends as well. So you know our family still mix now and what have you. So the, the, there was a lot of trust within the department, so it was it was a real good time. You know, and we we had some good players and um, good managers, and and I left in two thousand and eleven, unfortunately in the in the November, and they they got relegated in the in the May. So, um, um, but yeah, the eleven years I had there were were, were really really good. Mm. So, yeah, and then so how did that move come about then to leave? Um. I mean, having been, I'd had a relegation at, at Blackpool and um, you could just see the signs. The Venkies had took over at Blackburn and um, you could, you know, having been in football a long time, you can sort of see when players, good players were being allowed to leave and were being replaced by inferior players. And, you know, it was the, the, the year before I left. So I left in the November in the May of the year before, of the season before, Blackburn sort of stayed up at Wolves on the last day of the season. Um, so you knew things were declining, and the players that that we that were being brought in weren't of the same standard. So it was only going to end, um, you know, badly. So the jobs came up at City, and um, you know I thought, well, I've got to show some some. I've been at Blackburn quite a while, so it, you know, probably time for a change. And um, applied for one of the jobs and, and got one of the jobs. So it was three or four different jobs up at City, and, and I managed to get one of the first team jobs. So, um, so yeah, that was uh, that was how that came about, really. So when the, you said there was quite a few jobs, was that because City they just started investing then, hadn't they? Because I know we were involved with like the yeah. training ground at Carrington. Yeah, I mean the, the lad called Steve McGregor had come in and done a, a, a sort of a needs analysis and what have you and. And put in place a, a, a document of of what best practice might look like. So the club were in the process of of need, needing more physios, 
Um, so yeah, that's how the jobs came up. All every department at the club was sort of expanding um, in line with the, their ambitions. So yeah, there was there was there were jobs up in various departments. Um, yeah. So just when you come back to the the Venkies then. So when they came in, were you around when that chicken was on the pitch in the shirt? Um, yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, um, I mean, the Venkies, I, I, I haven't met them, but but they were they seemed really decent people. It was just, um, yeah, the 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 way it was, they they were running it from a distance, and it just didn't seem to work. So, um. And like I say, the main thing for the like I didn't know the Venkies, but the the main thing for me was the players we were letting go and the people we were bringing in was, were not of the same quality, and it was only going to end in relegation, which unfortunately it did. Mm. So, um, but again, now I mean the Venkies are, are still there to the credit. So uh, yeah, I, I mean if I if I if I was a Blackburn fan, they need to sort of get the Venkies on side again because the the hopefully they're going to get back in the Premier League at some point. Um, but it became a little bit toxic towards around that time where the fans just just turned on them a little bit and yeah it wasn't, it wasn't working but yeah it did seem like it did did seem really toxic quite quickly there didn't it maybe just yeah for what you say in terms of the players but Blackburn seem to be on the up so they're doing quite well aren't they this season so yeah yeah they are fingers crossed I mean um, they're just building steadily which is which is good to see. And the turmoil, like they were going through too many managers and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, that's never never good for any football club. So, mm. um, yeah, fingers crossed they, they can get back in the Prem. Yeah, and then going so back to City then. So it was a big change in terms of the staffing at, over at Man City. What yeah. was it like going in there? Yeah, um, a completely different sort of atmosphere. Um, so, you know, I think... I don't know whether how much the manager wanted. The Mancini wanted his own medical team, so that was difficult. Um, but yeah, I mean, the, the, there's a lot, a lot of good people at the time at City. There still is. So it was, but you had a manager who was really headstrong at the time and wanted his own way with everything. And the club wouldn't, you know. I think it's really, it's, it can be quite dangerous if a manager's got a big say on on a lot of the injuries. There has to be sort of that independence, and and the medical team has to have autonomy. Um, so there was bits and pieces like that. It was, um, it was, uh, yeah, ne- never a dull moment again. Um, and the facilities weren't great. The facilities were very average. But um, so my first year was 2011, like going the November, and and at the end of the season, Aguero obviously scores his his, his famous goal. Which, um, but again, yeah, there was there was, there was stuff kicking off every day, and it was it was an unbelievable place to work. But uh, but yeah, what an experience! Experience. Yeah. So for then that, so Man City then. So Mancini was there. So when you say he wanted to bring his own team in, was that like an Italian team or? or... It never it never really got that far because because the club, um, to their credit, sort of said no. Um, you know, this is this is the medical team at the time, and you know, obviously, um, Max Salas, um, was brought in. And, and could speak Italian, obviously, and um, I think that helped with a lot of things. But um, but yeah, he, uh, the club the club always wanted it to be a sort of an independent type thing, which, which to me it, it has to be like that. You know, you, you can't have managers sending players off to see people who looked after them twenty years ago and all that kind of stuff. That you know, it has to there has to be some objectivity in it and um, independence for me. So. Which which carried on. That was fine there, you know. It, but it was uh, it was never a dull moment really there. So. <laughs> any any things you can share, or are they more uh, things you shouldn't? Not really. No, it was just a completely different. For me, it was a different atmosphere altogether. You know, there, there was, um, yeah. It, it, it like I say that the the medical department at, at Blackburn, we, we um, we'd all worked together for a long time. There was a lot of trust there. You know, so so no, it was it was just different. It was you could see the club were 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 being ruthless in a lot of things they did, and and they had to get success, had to be done. There was no there's no two way, that, and they were always going to get the success that they had. Um, you know, they were throwing absolute you know fortunes at it from a from a resource point of view, so it had to succeed, and um, you know that creates a 
um, a certain atmosphere, which is, again is high is high end performance. But I mean, at the time when the the, the facility certainly at Carrington, the first year they won the league with Aguero, um, the facilities were very very average. It was it was probably League Two standard. But you had a great bunch of of players who who got together and and basically won the league, regardless of regardless of the facilities or or whatever. They just you know performed and 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 won the league. So that was that was brilliant. So, mm. so were you around? Was it Pellegrini was after Mancini? Yeah, yeah. I did I did a year with Pellegrini, um, who was who was a different kind of fellow altogether. Um, just really. Um, Placid, if you like, and and um, you know, just to, just it seemed like a good guy. Kept himself to himself. Um, left the medical department alone a little bit, which was which was refreshing, uh, and allowed us to do the jobs. So um, yeah, there was no real um, problems with him. Um, and then towards the end of my time at City, I um, I got asked to go and work with um, with Patrick Vieira, who was taking the 23s team. Um, at the time, and and I did that for sort of another eighteen months. Um, yeah, so that that was interesting working with with Patrick, who you know, obviously a really high level player. You you could see why he'd achieved what he what he'd achieved as a player. You know, he was single minded. Um, you know, could be quite ruthless, but he he was uh, he was high level. You could see why he'd achieved what he'd achieved, and really driven. So it, it doesn't surprise me that he's having success now as a as a, as a first team manager. Would he talk about wanting to go on and do that? I know it's pretty obvious, I guess, that he, you'd want to move up in terms of doing that. Not so much, but I, th- I think everyone just took it as a that that, that he was going to obviously cut his teeth, as you like, with the with the with the twenty threes team, and then and then go and play, or go and manage a, a, a men's team, and go from there. So. Obviously, he left City. Well, he didn't leave. He, he he stayed within the City Football Group to go to New York, and then left there and went and, and worked at, at Nice. So, um, yeah, I think he he was always um, always going to be a first team manager wherever, and might end up at back at City at some point. You never know. Mm. So, Were there ever any opportunities for you to to be a part of that City Football Group abroad? Did that ever appeal? Not particularly. I've never. Um, I mean, there was a, there was a job came up at Melbourne that, that a couple of the, the lads went for. But um, I mean, I've I've never moved my family for football. It's one of the, just uh, I've never had to, never had the need to. So yeah, it's never really interested me, to be honest. Um, but yeah, the the uh, a couple of the lads did apply for jobs at New York and and um, and Melbourne. But you know, my family were settled and. That type of stuff. So that 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 wasn't something that I I was uh, interested in. So. Mm. So then, but then, how did the Liverpool job come about? Yeah, no, the jobs. So I'd left City, and um, yeah, it was I'd had um, a phone call from um, Tim Williamson up at uh, Celtic. It was a first team job up there, um, and the Liverpool Academy job um, was up. And because um, th- Andy Renshaw had gone to Liverpool's first team, so I applied and and I got um, I had a, a first interview for um, for the Liverpool job, and then I was going away. I was going, I was taking the family to to America, so um, I got a phone call back within an hour of of having my first interview. Right, you've got a second interview, so I could I went away and and then I had the second interview and. Um, I had Tim Williamson, he was, he was contacting me quite a bit and saying, come on, come up, we'll have a chat, I'll come up to, to Scotland. And and um, so I had my second interview for Liverpool and I came back home and um, we were actually looking to go, we were going to book a hotel and go up and speak to Celtic the following day. Um, we're going to book in Loch Lomond. And I said to my, to my wife, just just give it give it an hour. I just had a feeling, Just get, I'd only been back in the house an hour after the second interview. I said, just give it an hour before we book anything. And she went, all right, OK. And then within an hour, they phoned me back and said, look, we want to offer you the job at, at Liverpool. So I never actually went up. I rang Tim and I said, look, I've, I've, I've just been offered this. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to take that. So, um, but yeah, it was, uh, yeah, the Celtic one, you never know. Because it was uh, at the time that Neil Lennon was around the place, who was an apprentice with me at City years ago. 
So um, I knew Neil quite well and I'd worked with Damien Duff and people like that. So, and obviously Celtic, what a club, what a massive club. So that could have been an, an option, but again, I'd have had to move. And like I said, I've never really moved the family. It would have meant commuting and what have you, or, or living up in Scotland for most of the week. But um, but the Liverpool one, yeah, it was, uh, it's, and it's been nearly five and a half, nearly six years now. So yeah, it's been a, been a real good move for me. Who so who do you get interviewed then? So is it the same people in the first and second interview, or yeah, who's doing it? Yeah, well, the the uh, a lady who the head of HR and Jim Moxon. Jim was the academy doctor at the time at, at Liverpool, so he interviewed me um, with the um, um, the head of HR, and then on the second interview, I had um, I had a, a chat with Andy Massey, um, who was the first team doctor at the time, and then. Again, and when I met Alex Inglethorpe, who's the academy director at, uh, at Liverpool. So, yeah, it was sort of, um, you just basically sit down and, and have, a, have a chat, if you like. So that, that was, uh, it was quite informal, yeah, but, but it was good. So, mm. And so what made you think that it had gone well enough for you to give it that extra hour? Um, yeah, just the way I'd, I'd come out. And because um, well, on my way out of the, um, of the second interview, um, the, the girl from HR, the, the head of HR, she said to me, well, you know, have you got anything else lined up? And, and I sort of said, well, I said, I've got nothing that I want more than this, but, you know, I'll just, I'll, I'll let you know. And obviously, um, um, I just said, look, I'm going up to speed to Celtic potentially tomorrow to go and, to go and have a chat with them. So, um, yeah, that's the only other thing. But obviously, this is my, this is the priority. I'd like, this is the job that I want. And um, yeah, so that's what gave me it. She went, okay, right, fair enough. And um, just drop that one in there. Yeah, I just had a feeling. And then yeah, yeah, we didn't we didn't book it up there anyway. So yeah, 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 yeah it could have been could have been a different story. But uh, do you, yeah. when you go in for these jobs, do you ever hear about other people going for them? And like you know, on the because it's such a small world. Yeah, I mean a, a, a little bit. Um, um, yeah, definitely. So. You find out little bits and pieces. There's, there's a couple of people coming up from London that got involved with the job, but um, I think the way Jim Moxon did it was was just it was it, he sort of made the final decision, and it was who he wanted. So we, when you're employing people at any football club, there there are obviously three or four different stakeholders who try who, who get involved. But really, again, going back to if it's a medical issue, I, I always believe that the, 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 the senior medical person should make the final decision. You know, if, if it's a coaching decision, the senior coach should make the decision. Um, that type of stuff. So, um, Jim, obviously I'd impressed Jim enough for him to offer me the job. Mm. And then, so going into the academy setup there, like, was, yep. were you happy to move away from first team? Yeah, to, to, yeah, to a degree, because, um, I just thought, you know, that you can still influence, not that you can't influence first team players, but, um, you know, that in a lot of instances, the boys will listen to you and you can, you know, the experience I've got of one of, of not being, not making it at football through, through for whatever reason, um, then, yeah, I can pass on a lot of that um, sort of experience, if you like, and, you know, I've been out, like I say, I didn't play for 23 months myself. So if, if we have long lads with long term injuries, it sort of resonates with them a little bit. If they, you know, I know what you're feeling. I know, I know where your mind is, um, you know, and, and hopefully I can help and, um, and, and help them out in times when it's, when it becomes difficult. So, yeah, I do think I can, I can with my experience, I can, I can have more of an influence. Um, first teams now, I'm not saying I'll never go back to first team, but. I enjoy working with with the younger players and um first team is really really you know it's it's massively time consuming it's um yeah it's, it's a lot of hours There's, there there are rewards to that but it's you know you family wise working in academies is it can be a lot a bit easier as well so having done the first team stuff for probably 18 years it's been nice to just um you know Get in the academy and, and and like I say, use the experience that I've got. Mm -hmm. And then for some, a club like Liverpool, they're absolutely super successful, but also have quite a high proportion of 
of youth players or younger players playing in there, that must be quite a link as well. Yeah, absolutely. We we um, the the thing about Liverpool is that they it's with any young player they need an opportunity. You know, you you have you really don't know um, who's going to do well or not until you give them the opportunity. Some players will freeze. Some players will will absolutely um, thrive in in that environment you you never know so the good thing with liverpool is they get an opportunity with the with the first team staff they are and liverpool um similar to sort of man united and and clubs like that have got a history of bringing young players through they have to do it it's part of their sort of um their ethos and their, and and it's it's great for academy if we if we see a young player get an get a, a, an appearance or even come on sub it just gives everyone in the academy a lift because you know you're doing things for a reason there is a chance for these players um and and yeah and you know that some of the some of the young players that have gone into liverpool's first team have really have really stepped stepped forward and and, and progressed so which is really good mm. and so when if you've got some of these players that are part of say your setup but then yeah. The manager says, right, we want them in the first team, which yeah. I guess does happen. Like, do they then come back down to you or how does that work? No, well, I mean, they, they generally, there will be one or two training sessions a week where where some of the younger players will go. We call it going across. A bit. It's basically walking through to the other side of the building and, and training on the opposite side of the building. So uh, with the first team. So, you know, the, the, the first team um, coaches might need... Um, if the manager wants to do an 11 v 11 practice or something, he might need three or four players. So, so then we, the, the three or four players, will go and train with the first team, which happens a lot. And again, if they if they thrive or you know or they, they uh, that sets them up. If you like, some players, you know, aren't ready for it and come back to us for a little bit to the academy and then just build the confidence that way and progress physically, progress mentally. You know they're still within the same system, so that we're, we're looking to to progress them on. Um, other players pretty much stay on the, on the first team side of the building, full stop. Doesn't happen often, but every now and again it does. Mm. Someone like Harvey Elliott, who who at a young age um, can physically cope uh, and seems to be able to mentally cope with the first team environment. So, you know the. They have players like that, and then they have players that will train and then come back in and and need maybe another six months with the under 23s or even the under 18s before they go back in again. Mm. So, it must create a great atmosphere in in your side as well because there's such seems such a close link between a lot of the youth players playing for the first team and the first team are obviously one of the best teams in the world at the moment. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the the the, the club is built that the way the academy works. It's um, they have, they have sort of certain pillars for success, and all the players have to be respectful. But it's all about standards, and and you know it's a bit of a cliche. We we try to develop people as well, so you know we want we don't don't let them get away with much if you like, uh, and and people are sort of held to account if you like. So in in a positive manner. So the players, yeah, they're good. They 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 they're not daft. They know they've got an opportunity or potentially might get an opportunity. So we expect certain things from them to train properly, to prepare correctly, um, to be respectful. You know, it's, it's it'll be the same at most clubs. Um, mm. But Liverpool, yeah, we we seem to do okay with it. And then in terms of like, does that come from the club itself? Because Liverpool have got that reputation, but then you've got a manager who is so charismatic and just seems like an absolute winner. So where yeah. do you think it comes from? It's both. It's both. I mean, it's. It's such a historical club, Liverpool, you know, uh, and we still have some of the old players. Um, I mean, one of my best days I've I've ever ever had in football. My favourite player growing up was Kenny Dalglish, and and very early on when I went into into the academy, um, he still comes in and has lunch with the lads, and so I managed to sit have a, have a, have a bit of lunch with, with my one of my idols, if you like. So there is a lot of history there. A lot of the old players are still involved. Um, Steve Highway still involved, who who ran, who set the academy up, if you like. Um, so there's a lot of history there, and 
the standards that were that made them so successful going back to that era still are relevant today. So yeah, the, the, they're the sort of the, the things that the club talk about a lot. Um, we still have a lot of ex players come in and sort of mentor the young players. So Steve McManaman, Rob Jones, people like that, um, which is good. You know, they they sort of there to mentor the young players and and you know give them advice and these obviously haven't played at the top level. So mm. yeah, they, they, no, nothing's perfect, but they do they do a lot of things really well at the academy, in my opinion. Yeah, and then so just just wrapping up then. So, are there any particular moments that you can really resonate with you that are just some of the most exciting or memorable that you've had? Now, going back to the Aguero goal, I mean that was that that um, yeah that that was unbelievable. The whole thing around it, the build up to it, the three or three or four months before that, where where it was the first time they won the prem. Um, yeah, it was it was just there was a lot of chaos, but it was the, the team was brilliant and they had a great set of lads who just got together, the likes of Micah Richards, Gaz Barry, Milner, um, Joe Hart. There was there was a just bunch of, of lads, obviously Vinny Company, that just basically got together and said, Right, we're gonna do this and, and that was unbelievable the way the way it turned out. But uh yeah, no, that was uh that was an unbelievable day. Um, and what's what's that like for you then? Bear in mind, you'd played for the club as a you'd seen it from that pretty. It was a, a really uh, unusual club at that point, wasn't it? It was kind of up and down all the time. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it just yeah. Having been having been, I'd only been there since the November, but you know, it felt a part of it, and you know, got to know quite a few of the players quite well, and yeah, it was it was it was good. It wasn't the it wasn't the organisation it is now. You see, because it was. It was a real. It was a smaller staff, having you know at at, uh, at Carrington, um, so everyone sort of knew everyone, um, so it was a real tight knit sort of group of of players uh, and staff, and um, yeah, it was just yeah, it was uh, it was the first time that they were going to do it, so it was a battle, and you know you didn't you know they, they could have they nearly blew it at the end of the day, but but then turned it around, so believable. Yeah, no, I was. Yeah, I remember that. That was that really was unbelievable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, any particular aspirations? How long do you anticipate staying in football for? Yeah, no, I've um, um, I've just sort of completed a, a a sort of a leadership course, a masters in sporting directorship. So I've just completed that. So, yeah, I mean, I, my, I manage the department now at Liverpool. So, um, I don't want to let the clinical side of things go. I still enjoy working with players. I still un- enjoy, um, you know, covering games and things like this. So, um, but again, I, I do cover the a nine to sixteens clinic on a Monday evening, which I thoroughly enjoy that as well. So, I'm enjoying working up and down the age groups and uh, and helping helping the other physios if I can with with with, with bits of my experience. So, yeah, I don't. I'm I'm really happy doing what I'm doing. So, got no plans to to change anything. In the near future, anyway. So yeah. <laughs> now it's a good place to be. Yeah, it's a good place to be. Definitely. Great. No, no. Well, I really appreciate your time today, and uh, hope you get a negative test soon. Yes, thank you. Thank and you. yeah, hopefully we'll be over the training ground soon. So um, yeah, yeah. Look forward to seeing it. Yeah, look forward to it, Andy. Brilliant. Thanks, Paul. Thanks so okay. much for your time. Cheers. Cheers. No problem. Bye.